there is a term that we use every once in a while but we really don't preach on it we really don't talk about it we really don't live it as I would hope that we do so what I want to do with this term today is make it a part of the empowerment journey so much so that it becomes part of our theme really our theme because you see I believe that what we have going is a movement we don't know what's going to happen and how it's going to come out we don't know what the future holds except that we feel very strongly that the presence of God is with us and that because of that factor we're on our way on our way it's soul and so you are soul is the term I'm talking about soul so we talk about heart mind body but very seldom and, and I think it's because we're not sure about soul the psalmist in about 118 and, and, and sings this song awake my soul awake awake my soul awake let the sounds of my soul ring out let the sounds of my soul have balance and harmony let the sounds of my soul also have a cutting edge let the sounds of my soul create spirit soul creates a spirit people and so when you are spirited you got soul All right. so many people are looking for spirituality and I want you to know that spirituality cannot and will not come unless unless we find the right sources unless we find that which says to us you are free so frees us and when we are free watch out watch out <laughs> watch out because freedom means not only responsibility but it means also doing things out of the ordinary I heard a ooh ooh back here <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's what it does ooh, ooh. oh my god see there is another song that the psalmist sings which in fact helps us it says make a joyful noise unto the Lord And you can't make a joyful noise unto the Lord unless you got soul. See, a lot of people can make noise. Catch me now. Catch me. A lot of people can make noise, but they can't make a joyful noise. Because joy comes in the morning. Joy comes when you've been through something all night long. Joy comes when you've suffered a little bit. And when you've fallen and when things don't seem right. And it seems as though you better go on and take your life. But joy comes in the morning when you didn't take your life. You see. One of the problems we face, I think, is that we always want to make sure that we're right. Always want to be right. Because when we're right, you see, we're somebody. I mean, then we have control, Jared. You know? We just love to cool, just make sure, just love to control 
everything in our lives. And you cannot control everything in your life because life keeps pushing and gyrating. Life keeps jumping and life keeps moving and life keeps lifting us up and life keeps us from going down. But the important thing that happens to us is that we must come to grips with the fact that life means that we are moving toward a new community and a new understanding of our soulness. Soulness. Oh, Lord. Yes, I do too. My brothers and my sisters, I, I, I feel that we're so caught up in trying to not only make things right, but make things quiet. When things are quiet and still, we are more comfortable. But when the rappers start rapping, do you know who some great preachers are? Rappers. I'm talking about great preachers. They really are. They always got a message. I may not always disagree with the message, but, but they always got a message. And they always got that kind of style that preachers have, and especially the style where it takes us into a kind of rhythm. And when the rhythm comes, it means that we can go on and we can just do it. Do it. Do it. I said we can just do it. Do it. Do it. I said, we can do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Stop worrying about the noise. Make a joyful noise. See, we get worried about the joy when we don't make the, the joy. We, don't, we worry about the noise when we don't make the noise joyful. 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 My brothers and my sisters, this is the church. What do I mean? This, I'm saying this is the church. Do you know? That at this time on Sunday morning, even though we still have the most segregated time and hour of our weekly duties and responsibilities, still, this is the church. This is the church. And that means that some way, somehow, all of the stuff, all of the stuff, that we've collected over the years yeah, yeah. is about to be uh, upended. It has now reached a point where the water is too much and it's going to break the log jam and the water is going to begin to flow and we're going to get a river, a river that takes us to a new place. And when we get that river that takes us to a new place, we are going to begin to rejoice. And we're going to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for bringing us thus far. You know, one of the things that often happens to us is once we get something going, we inevitably want to stop it. And I'm saying to my brother and sister churches, wherever you are, yeah. don't stop it. Don't let nobody back home tell you you're not the church. That's right. You let them tell you, but you tell them, you may not think I'm the church, but I'm the church. Yeah. I'm the church. Yeah. You know, there are folks who come in here sometimes and disagree with the prayer or disagree with the preaching or disagree with the disagreements or whatever you know forget it baby you can forget it we are not turning back not turning round 
Not here. No, no, no. How many times should I say that? No. I remember when my bishop, uh, I came here and, and some of the folks said to my bishop, uh, you know, what is he doing? Why would you bring us a black man who's so out of it, you know? And, I think they must have had an investigation by the FBI and CIA because they had all kinds of information on me. And I said, I don't care what kind of information you got on me. I want you to know something. I am the church. I'm the church. And they said, yeah, but we got a church. You, 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 you're trying to get a sign to it. I said, no, 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 no. That church is not the building. You're the church. The people. We, we are the church. And we're not turning back. One of the major problems we face is we often fall out with each other. Watch out. Watch out. We often can't get our relationships working for us. There's always somebody who does not want us to go on, who will do anything in the world to keep us where we are. And the church, if it is the church, should never be where it was 25 years ago. The church must vibrate and gyrate. The church must have soul. Must have soul. I'm reminded, I'm reminded, I'm reminded of how not only do we, you know, our relationship, how mean we can be and how dissatisfied we can be and how upset, up, notice I said upset, upset, you know. People just upset. They're a lot more up than they are set. But anyway. Yes, sir. But the important thing is that I came from a tradition. I came from roots that helped me to define my philosophy, but basically that helped me to define my prophet, my being a prophet. Being a prophet meant that I must be able to know that I am in exile, that I am in prison, but one of these days I'm going to break out. And I want you to know that one of these days came some time ago. And I was like old Moses saying to the people in Egypt's land, let my people go. Let my people go. And I heard it and I saw it and I did it and I related to it. And I got stronger and I became more confident. And I began to make sure that my support was for justice and righteousness. And that what we would do is one of these days we break down all the walls of segregation. And that which kept us apart from each other. And look at this. We're together. And finally, finally, let my people go. What, what, what are we talking about? I'm talking about the eye on the prize, says Martin King. And those who wrote the book, what they're essentially saying is that the eye on the prize is the redeeming of the soul of America. Yeah. We here, let me be honest with you, trying to redeem the soul of the church. Well, I'm being honest about it. I want the church to be redeemed. I want it to be liberated. I want it to have salvation. I want it done in ways that the soul becomes the critical movement of what we're trying to do. And that we just don't find ourselves dilly-dallying with little issues that don't relate to the transformation of the life of people, the mind, the body, the soul, and the heart. My brothers and my sisters, I tell you this. We must redeem the soul, not only of America, but of the church. And Lord, here we come. Wake up, my soul. Wake up. <laughs>